This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. Okay, this is the second lecture on Chapter 23 of the free lecture notes, uh, Foreign Exchange Risk Management. Uh, and uh, in the previous lecture, I went through um, how we decide actually how to convert money, which rate to use, and so on. But now let's look at the ways you're expected to be aware of, of uh, certainly reducing and hopefully avoiding the risk of exchange rates changing between now and the date we either pay or receive the foreign currency. Uh, and on the third page of the notes, in paragraph five, there's a list there of ways you're expected to be aware of albeit only two of them are you actually expected to be able to do calculations on, but all of them you are expected to be aware of. And so running down the list, uh, the first little section are all, uh, when I explain, I think very obvious ones. The first one is invoicing in the home currency. I'm in the UK, I'm selling goods to America. Well, if I invoice in pounds, then I'm not subject to any risk at all. It's the customer who's got the risk. All right, the trouble is it may be a big customer who insists on being invoiced in dollars. If it's a big customer, I might be prepared to do that. And if I'm due invoicing dollars and I'm in the UK, then I'm at risk to exchange rate movements. But if I can invoice in pounds, best of all, no risk. Now, buying goods, if I'm buying goods from America, almost certainly, of course, I'll be invoiced in dollars, I'll have to pay dollars, I'm at risk. If I can persuade them to invoice me in pounds, then again, there'd be no risk. So no arithmetic there for the exam, but be aware, it's the most obvious way of all of removing the risk. Uh, the second one, leading and lagging. I don't actually like this too much because it doesn't really avoid risk, but even so, you expect to be aware of it. Uh, what it is, is if you owe money in a foreign currency, then either pay quickly or delay paying depending on which way you expect the exchange rate to move. So suppose I owe money, in the UK I owe dollars to an American company. If I think the exchange rate is going to move against me, it would be better if I paid quickly before the exchange rate changed. On the other hand, if I think the exchange rate is going to move in my favour, then delay payment as long as I can, uh, because I'll end up paying less. Which is fine, but the trouble is, of course, and the reason I don't really like it as a method of reducing risk, is that I may think the exchange rate is going to move in my favour and delay paying, or I may think it's going to move against me and pay quick, but it doesn't remove the risk because I could be wrong. You know, there's no way we can predict what's going to happen. I may think it going one way or the other, but I could be wrong. Uh, it's called leading and lagging, because paying quickly is called leading. Delaying payment is called lagging. Uh, the third one, netting. And this is actually a very obvious one. Um, suppose you sell, suppose we're in the UK, and we sell to America, and so a customer is paying us dollars. 
But suppose also I buy from America and I have to pay dollars. And I'm going to receive the dollars in about a month and I'm going to have to pay dollars to somebody else in about a month. Well, surely it's a bit silly to receive dollars, convert them, and then two minutes later, because I've got to pay dollars, then convert the other way and buy dollars. Surely, whatever dollars I receive, I'll use those dollars to make my payment. And I'll only convert the net amount. It's only the net amount that would be at risk. So use, well, I'll, depends on the currencies, obviously, but use dollar, for example, use dollar receipts to make dollar payments. You know, the dollar bank account. And you're only at risk on the net amount. Uh, finally, the first four, matching, which is rather different. What this is, by, for example, uh, suppose I'm in the U um, we're in the UK, and we have regular income in dollars. I'm in the UK. Most of my sales are perhaps in the UK, but I do sell to America and I've got income in dollars, ooh, $50,000 a year. Now, obviously, that's a risk. As the exchange rate goes up and down, my pound income um, will move with the exchange rate. And so, what matching is, let's create an expense in dollars. How can I create an expense? Two ways, or sorry, lots of ways, two examples. One is, maybe I was intending to borrow some money and normally I would borrow pounds, obviously, and pay interest in pounds. Maybe though, I deliberately borrow dollars, so I've got to pay interest in dollars. Why on earth would I do that? Well, because as the exchange rate changes, my dollar, my dollar income, when I convert it to pounds, as the exchange rate changes, it gets higher and lower. But if at the same time I have an expense in dollars, surely as the exchange rate changes, that gets higher and lower as well. So if there's similar amounts, exchange rate changes, higher income, but higher expense. If the exchange rate goes the other way, lower income, but lower expense, it sort of cancels it, it sort of, it, itself out. Um, another example, maybe, you know, I sell to America, uh, my raw materials, currently I buy them all in the UK, but perhaps deliberately buy raw materials for America, so that again, I have an expense in uh, dollars to cancel the income in dollars. Uh, now, those four, on those four, you can't be asked arithmetic. It's just being aware of four ways there that we could go about trying, at any rate, to remove the risk. The other five, though, forward contracts, money market hedges, currency futures, currency options, currency swaps, uh, are using the exchange markets, as you'll see. Uh, and, well, I am going to go through them, uh, but it's the first two where you can be asked calculations in paper F9. So by far the most important, forward contracts and money market hedges. As you'll see, one's very easy, one isn't hard, but needs a bit more thought. And they are asked pretty regularly. 
So A and B, you are required to be able to do numbers. Uh, C, D and E, you cannot be asked numbers on, but you're required to be aware what they are. So again, I'll break this lecture. In the next lecture, I will go through forward contracts and many market hedges, go through the arithmetic, uh, and then I'll uh, hopefully reasonably quickly explain what the other three are. Whereas I said, you're not required to do arithmetic.